G'day guys and welcome to Redriven. Now, Mark Warburg, a stocky, muscular American who's brilliant at action and adventure, can be good for a bit of a laugh, but let's be honest, is a bit average at everything else. And rumour has it he can be a bit of a nightmare to work with and, as we can see from his career, is pretty inconsistent. Which brings us to this, the Jeep Wrangler, a stocky, muscular American who's brilliant at action and adventure. It's pretty good for a laugh, but can be a bit average at everything else. And rumour has it, these things can be pretty hard to work with and apparently pretty inconsistent as well. And now that these JK Wranglers are a few years old, have seen thousands of kilometres both on and off-road, are they actually any good? What goes wrong with them? Can you use them every day? And most importantly, should you buy one? Let's find out. Now in this video, we will be talking about the Australian variants of the JK Wrangler. But if you're not from Australia, don't freak out because everything we're gonna be going over should relate to JK Wranglers in your local market. Before we get deep into the JK Wrangler, please do us a favor and hit those like, subscribe and bell buttons. And hey, why not go and follow us on all the socials as well? The JK Wrangler was released way back in 2007 and it wrapped up in 2018. And it comes as either a short wheelbase two-door Wrangler or this, the longer wheelbase four-door Wrangler Unlimited. And here in Australia, the Wrangler range was based around three main models. The base model Sport and the off-road focused Rubicon from 2007 and the luxury spec over Overland from 2013. These have been available with three different engines and a few different transmissions, but more on that later. Then there have been a host of different special and limited editions, not to mention the seemingly endless array of factory and aftermarket accessory options. Now, we won't be going over every single technical detail of every Wrangler variant in this video, otherwise the video will go for days rather than minutes. But we have done that and put it in our handy redriven cheat sheets. Our cheat sheets are invaluable as they provide a full breakdown of the car's model range, its common problems, what you need to look out for before you hand over your hard-earned cash, how much of that cash you should be handing over, and so much more. Check it out in the link below. Now, the Wrangler and Jeeps for that matter have one of the most passionate and loyal fan bases in all of automotive. And let's be honest, the men in that fan base are far more masculine than I am. And I'm a little concerned that if we say anything bad about these that they might try to beat me up. But we are gonna be as honest as we can be in this video because these are the sacrifices that I make for you. It's no secret that these things, even in the base spec sport trim, are just phenomenal off-road. But there are some key things you need to check out if you're in the market to buy any 4x4, not just a Wrangler. So please, before you go shopping, make sure you check out our ultimate 4x4 buyer's guide video. Now, this particular Wrangler Unlimited Actually, guys, I'm not going to call it a Wrangler Unlimited. It is a Wrangler Unlimited, but saying Wrangler Unlimited through the whole video is just going to be annoying. So I'm going to call it a Wrangler. I know it's a Wrangler Unlimited. I'm just going to call it a Wrangler. Now, this particular Wrangler is one of the very rare, completely standard and stock models. Most of these things have got some kind of lift kit or a bigger wheel and tire package or they're drenched in some kind of accessory. So stoked to get a standard one. Now, if you are looking at a Wrangler and it is loaded with accessories, just make sure that those accessories are of the highest quality and equally as important, make sure they've been fitted professionally. Actually, look, there's a bunch of other really important 4x4 tips that you need to know if you are buying a 4x4 of any kind, not just a Wrangler. Check it up in our Ultimate 4x4 Buyer's Guide link up there. Now, as far as quality goes and what to watch out for, these black bumpers have gone mm -hmm. a bit Michael Jackson and have turned kind of light gray rather than retaining their blackness. You can freshen them up using some quality car detailing products, but it's a bit crap that that happens at all. Actually, what's weird is that some of the black bits stay black, but other bits don't. Like back here, this is kind of more 50 shades of gray than it is black. Actually, we did a video on an FJ Cruiser recently and all of its black bits are still black. Next up, the headlights. It seems that they've forgotten that emitting light is actually an integral part of their job description. You can get aftermarket LED items to make that brighter, but standard? They're crap. Speaking of not being able to see where you're going, these hood latches. Once you get a Wrangler up to like freeway speed, air gets under the bonnet and it starts to lift it up a little bit, which stretches the rubber on the hood latches and the whole bonnet starts to shake. When you're in the front seat, it looks like the bonnet might flick up and smash you in the face or at least cover the windscreen, which is mildly terrifying. That's not gonna happen, but you can get aftermarket bonnet latches to stop any kind of bonnet shimmy. Make sure you check all these little bolts and hinges for any signs of rust or paint bubbling. Now, these hardtop models have a reputation for leaking, so just make sure you check all the seals here and here for any signs of water damage or if the rubber's degrading. 
Next up, check the inside of the front bar, under the arches and the lower control arm and sway bar for any signs of rubbed off paint or rubber rubbing from bigger wheel and tire packages or lift kits. If there are any signs of rubbing, look, maybe the lift kit hasn't been fitted correctly or maybe the wheel and tire package is oversized or just incorrect for the Wrangler. Now, if the Wrangler you're looking at has been fitted with any larger wheel or tire packages, including the back one, make sure that these hinges and the tire carrier have been upgraded because they have a tendency to fail with any excessive weight. Make sure you check for any cracked paint or like odd looking bends to the metal on both the hinges and the tire carrier and make sure that the rear door opens and closes really easily. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, these things are just incredible off-road and have probably been used pretty heavily off-road. So go over the entire body and more importantly, get underneath and have a look at the undercarriage for any signs of abuse, any water damage or any dodgy repair work. Scratches and a few decent hits are to be expected, but look, if it's been seriously abused, do you really want to open that can of worms? How's the interior? Look, first up, I personally love this whole utilitarian aesthetic in here. Like, yeah, all the plastics are hard, all this switch gear and buttons and everything feels really rugged, but it just totally suits what this thing is all about. It just, it's cool. Actually, one thing that's worth pointing out is that even though this car's from 2016, all the leather is aging so well, like it hasn't gone all shiny and gross, but it looks bloody great. As far as quality goes, it's actually really good. A mate of mine has one of these, and he has his tools and his dogs and his camping gear inside all the time, and he's actually had it submerged up to the window sills in water multiple times, and after a solid clean out, it's really, really good. This particular one hasn't had anywhere near that level of workout, and yeah, it feels excellent. One thing that is worth checking out is that if the Wrangler you're looking at is owned by someone the height of Tyrion Lannister, just check the side bolsters of the seat because these can get a bit overly squishy if they're excessively exposed to those that are a bit height restricted. And it must be a thing when it comes to 4x4s like this because we did an FJ Cruiser recently and it too, its gear selector is quite a phallic knob, just that this one has two phallic knobs. And this is a weird one. The brake pedal is way higher, like way higher than the accelerator pedal. So when you want to brake, you almost have to lift your whole leg up and onto the brake pedal, which surely is going to be dangerous in an emergency. As far as the second row goes, look, this is in my driving position. I'm six foot two and there's not a whole lot of knee room. I've got to do a bit of a leg spread, which isn't very ladylike of me. Heaps of foot room, heaps of headroom. And again, everything's wearing really well. This leather feels great. It's actually pretty comfy despite the leg spread. Also, if you've got some feline tendencies, these are really fun. How's the tech? It's amazing. No, it's not, it's utter crap. This being the sport, it has the base model infotainment system, which it does have Bluetooth connectivity, but you pretty much have to talk through all of Wikipedia to get it to recognize your voice and voice commands. And even the 6.5 inch touchscreen on high spec models is utter crap. If you want Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, or any of those mod cons or something that isn't powered by Steam, you're gonna have to get an aftermarket head unit. As far as other tech, it has got cruise control, and that's about it. Room in the back is excellent. It's almost palatial back here. Loads of space. I'm very comfortable. Also, because these doors are removable, there's no like spring mechanism to hold them open or closed. So if you're parked on an angle and the door's coming to get you, there's nothing to stop it attacking you. It just hangs free. Quick warning for JLo or Nicki Minaj. This thing here will get you in the bum when you try to get in. Just attacked me. Ah! As far as practicality in the back, you've got a couple of matte pockets on the back of the seats, two cup holders down here, and more nets for your fish. As far as practicality in the front goes, you have a lockable little storage cubby hole here with a drop down lid. You've got two cup holders here, you've got a net in case you want to put any fish in there, you've got more nets on the side which I suppose would hold a small water bottle, and a pretty small glove box, so yeah, it's got okay practicality. Is it reliable? Well, look, I'm not a mechanic, so I'm not qualified to answer that question, but Jim is a mechanic, so here's Jim. Hey, would you like a fresh bouquet of electrical gremlins? Or some spontaneously broken engine parts? These are out of countless Wranglers that we see that have had terrible and catastrophic failures. A recent example of terrible Jeep reliability was a Wrangler we had in recently where the engine had catastrophically failed. 
the owner was quoted 20 grand by Jeep to repair it. He decided to get himself a second-hand engine. He supplied the engine and we installed the engine and sent him on his way. And soon after that, on his first trip away with his caravan, that engine also blew up. Look, I get it, they're great off-road. But in terms of reliability, they're not great. The engine failure, transmission failure, oil leaks, coolant leaks, electrical problems, the list goes on. Don't let Jeep's marketing department make you think these things are reliable, cause they're just not. Is it safe? Well, it does come with driver and passenger front airbags, but anyone in the back is left to fend for themselves. Also, leg protection for the driver and passenger is pretty ordinary, and there's a distinct lack of safety technology. It does have ABS, stability control, and electronic brake force distribution, and from 2012, a four-star ANCAP safety rating, but that's about it. So is it safe? Well, to modern standards, not really. You know what I love about driving the Wrangler? It doesn't feel like some watered down SUV trying to be something it's not. On the road, look, there's minimal refinement in here. The steering is super vague, but it still feels quite strong. The suspension's really harsh on the road. It has a tendency to kind of wander about all over the place, especially under brakes. There's a fair bit of wind and road noise. And you know what? I love every bit of it. It just suits what this thing's about. If you're carrying any sort of speed through a corner and hit a bump or a pothole, it really upsets the Wrangler. To me, I love that. I think it's heaps of fun, but to many, it's mildly terrifying. Okay, things to check out when you're on a test drive. A common issue with these things is sloppy steering and the infamous Wrangler death wobble. For some reason, even a lot of suspension specialists can't diagnose this problem, but it's commonly worn track bar bushings. It's pretty easily fixed with an aftermarket heavy duty track bar, which funnily enough is cheaper than a genuine Jeep item. The common cause is generally lift kits or larger wheel or tire packages not being fitted correctly. Speaking of bigger wheels and tires, many people don't upgrade the brakes when they fit bigger wheels and tires which just wears out the factory items heaps faster because of the extra load. This one is not modified and brakes great. On your test drive make sure you push all the buttons and make sure everything works. Oh God, that's harsh. And make sure you plant the right foot. It should pull smoothly and easily. That's what she said. This is super important. Take it to a quiet spot and put it into four high and four low. Try every gear. If it has diff lockers, try them. If it has a sway bar to disconnect, try that. Basically, try every possible function the Wrangler has to offer. Also, listen for any dodgy sounds coming from the engine bay. If you hear children screaming, pull over immediately. Now look, I'd love to take this thing deep off-road and show you what it can really do, but this isn't my car, it's actually currently for sale and we're in the middle of Sydney and we just don't have time to go trekking into the wilderness. Plus, there are thousands, if not millions of hours of YouTube footage of these things doing insane things off-road, so just take my word for it, these are phenomenal off-road. What these cost to buy at the moment is awesome if you're selling one and not so good if you're buying one. Because of the C word thing going on around the world at the moment, any 4x4 or adventure vehicles pricing has just skyrocketed. Older base spec two-door Wranglers with loads of mileage and in pretty shabby condition are gonna cost you around about $20,000. At the other end of the spectrum, brilliant condition, newer top spec four-door unlimited models drenched in aftermarket goodies, and I can't believe I'm saying this, are going to cost you anywhere from sixty-five to eighty thousand dollars. As far as fuel consumption goes, look, it's going to vary depending on the engine and transmission configuration, how much weight has been added with aftermarket accessories, and how much off-roading it actually does. This one is claimed by Jeep at eleven point seven liters per one hundred kilometers, but on this test, we're seeing figures over fifteen. The Wrangler was initially released with a three-year, 100,000km warranty, which was upgraded to a five-year, 100,000km warranty in February of 2017. And servicing is recommended at every 12 months or 12,000 Ks, but Jeep here in Australia have a pretty horrible reputation for after-sales service, so we highly recommend taking these to your local independent mechanic instead. Also, as the Wrangler is absolutely loved by the aftermarket industry, you don't necessarily have to buy original or genuine Jeep parts because pretty much every nut, bolt, bracket and bit and piece is made by some 4x4 or Jeep aftermarket company. But just remember that the more that's been modified, chances are the more that can go wrong, especially if those modifications have been fitted incorrectly. 
So should you buy one? Look, it depends. If you're generally going to use the Wrangler's immense off-road abilities, are happy to deal with its unique characteristics and are mentally and financially prepared to deal with the gremlins that are probably going to pop up, we well, should go and buy an FJ Cruiser. But no, in all seriousness, yeah, you should buy a Wrangler. If you absolutely have to get one, look, the one we recommend is getting the most recent, lowest kilometer post-2012 Rubicon you can afford with the 3.6 liter Panastar V6 petrol engine. And look, guys, trust us, unless you're as handy with tools as Quentin Tarantino is with a camera, avoid the earlier 3.8 and diesel variants. But, and look guys, please be honest with yourselves here. If you're buying the Wrangler as more of a fashion statement, have no intention of ever taking it off-road and the most adventure it will see is parking in a tight parking spot next to your favorite cafe, then look, no, you shouldn't buy one. Yes, they are super cool, especially if you're embracing the whole Jeep adventure thing, but if not, you're just left with the uncomfortable, noisy, and potentially unreliable truck that may cost you a small fortune. Guys, trust us, the novelty with these things will wear off. Yeah, they're just so cool, aren't they? It is so cool. Damn it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. What did you think? Do you own a Wrangler? Let us know in the comments section below. And remember, hit those like, subscribe, and bell icon buttons. And hey, why not go and follow us on all the socials as well? See you next time.